Hi guys and welcome to part 5 of my Vendetta series videos. In this video we're going to be addressing one of the big issues that's been plaguing the TBS forums. Everyone online that talks about the Vendetta you'll hear one issue and that is with the zero zero camera on the front, the FPV camera. You may have seen my videos of the maiden flight and there was um, lots of issues with the video feed. Uh, I've managed to resolve the crackling and the, the black lines across the feed and I'll tell you in a little bit about how I addressed that. But to be honest the Zero Zero camera is not it's not living up to its expectations and it's quite an expensive camera. So one of the cameras that has been touted as one of the best cameras on the market at the moment is the Foxy H2 H1177. You can just see that on there if that comes into focus. Um, so I've picked up one of these cameras and what we're going to do today is we're just going to run through how to install that and how to change the pinouts on the existing cabling for the Vendetta to make it work with this Fox 8 camera. As you can see I've already dismantled the Vendetta because we've done that in a previous video. Um, I'm just going to go over how to install the camera, what you need to do, how to change the pins. Um, I'm going to talk to you about Different, different methods that have been suggested online for uh, changing the settings on the Zero Zero camera but I'm not going to do that I've decided that I'm just going to swap the camera out and I'll keep the camera as a spare just in case I need it and, you know, on another, another day um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just now going to just explain to you really <laughs> why there's not been any videos in the last sort of week or so and that is because I managed to completely smash the Vendetta into, into lots of little pieces. So over the last sort of week or so I've been doing some repairs and um, I'll show you now. Um, I was trying to do, I was trying to use some goal posts as um, a gate and you can just see here if I zoom in a little bit, there you go, that I managed to smash the carbon fibre frame. Uh, quite a bit of damage to that little part there but the rest of the frame seems okay. What I've done is just stick a little bit of glue on there just to stop it fraying anymore because the actual fibres of the carbon fibre frame were, were coming apart and I didn't want to damage it anymore. I have got a new frame on order and that is on its way to me now I believe. Um, so hopefully when that comes I'll be able to get that swapped out but I'll probably to be honest just keep using this frame until it's sort of beyond 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 use any, any longer because there's no point in me getting a new frame and then smashing that one to pieces so I'll probably just put that one on the shelf and uh, carry on using that. Um, so the other thing I managed to damage which is the XT60 connector and you can see now that I've replaced that with a black one. Um, unfortunately the ones that TBS use have this little lip on the bottom that sits under this black lock so it doesn't come out when you're pulling the batteries up. And um, this, these didn't have that and I didn't realise because I didn't actually take the old one out until I got the new ones in. As you can see I've used black to try and keep it in line with the rest of it. Um, but it's fine, the hot glue keeps it in there, it seems to be pretty sturdy. Um, the keen eye, out of, the keen eye of you out there will notice that I've got this on here. Um, this is just a standard servo extension lead. And the reason why that's there is because I'm actually going to erase in about a week week or so time, it's not this weekend, next weekend and I'm going to need to put a transponder on there um, and it needs to be easily swappable so that's what that is um, it's really easy thanks to Trappy at TBS he told me about these three little pins on the top of the power cube and um, you just wire up the uh, positive and the negative so that's why that's there um, and also the damage that was caused has been the main reason why we are not been doing any videos recently and obviously why I was unable to do this video so without further ado I'm going to get into actually removing the zero zero from the Vendetta and I'll show you how to install the Fox here okay so before we um, start getting the, the zero zero removed from the plastic tray uh, I thought I'd address one of the issues that people have been asking me on the uh, on the comments and that's why the video feed had so many lines across it and was that just down to the zero zero so as much as I'd like to blame everything on the camera because it's the easy way out it wasn't it was actually my bad placement of one of the cables 
particularly the antenna cables. So you can see here that I've used, as you would remember from the previous videos if you've watched, the um, FR Sky XSR antenna, which is a dual antenna receiver. And if you remember the video, we strapped it in using some nice tape here and we poked the antennas up through um, the, the holes round about here. Now you'll see this yellow cable, if I just use this nice to pull it up, you'll see this yellow cable here which is one of the camera cables, the video feed for the camera and that runs up inside here also, you'll see it going up up here and what I'd done is I'd run the uh, left or the right antenna up through this hole and the other one through this hole and the antenna was interfering with the yellow cable so you, what you must remember is to run both antennas up the same side which is oops, is the left hand side with the, with the orientation that I've got it now so you can see that the yellow cable comes up this side it goes up the hole down here you want both antennas to go up this cable uh, this hole and then when you flip it over you can easily just pull this one over to the side so it's still over here it just they just come up both the same hole um, and it seems to have solved that interference issue where I had the black lines going across the screen so that's really good and so I thought I'd just address that now um, because that's not gonna, that wouldn't have been fixed by replacing the camera. That was always still going to be there. So anyone else that's having that 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 interference, make sure that you've not ran the cables as as I had done, and you run them as they are now on on screen, uh, and that will that should solve all your issues with the um, the interference. Okay, so now what we're going to look at is how we remove the zero zero camera. So obviously I've already taken the the electronics tray out of the frame and you'll notice these two holes on either side which are where the plastic bumper screws in to well these also act as holes and fixings for the camera so if you just push away the plastic here you'll see there you go that it's flexing a little bit and that's because this has actually got a thread inside which keeps everything together and this is actually part of the bracket that holds the camera in there's also these um, screws on the side here which as you can see are used to adjust the tilt angle of the camera and it's these two holes that uh, these two screws that we need to remove to get the camera out and then obviously once the camera's out we will just need to remove the one yellow uh, the one white camera feed cable out and then the camera should just slip away so I'm going to do that now I'm going to remove both of these screws and we're going to see if that helps get the camera out so I've noticed the first issue <laughs> it's not a standard hex driver like all the others which I think are 2 millimeter H2 you can see on that unfortunately it's a different type of hex so I'm gonna have to stop the camera I'm gonna go and find one and then I'll come back And we're back and I've managed to find uh, my little tool set here which has got an assortment of different uh, bits and what I've found is the one that I needed, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out on here, but it's a T6. Uh, I'm not sure if that's exactly the right one for this but it does seem to fit and it does seem to work. So we're going to take these screws out and we're just going to note that it's about halfway. So when we put the, uh, the Fox Ear camera in we're going to make sure that it's around about halfway so we can re retain that angle. Uh, we'll test it and make sure that that angle is suitable. But as long as it's sort of in the round about the right place, it shouldn't be fine. We can make minor adjustments later. Just going to put that over there. Just flip it over. And now we're going to take this one out. I need to get a tripod really because holding the camera and doing this sort of thing really isn't very easy so I'm sorry about the camera shake over there and hopefully this should just start to loosen up a bit hmm. 
it's not not just coming out very easily. Okay. So I'm just gonna put the camera down and give it a little wiggle and see if I can get it out. I think it's just uh, it's just a two-handed job. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the reason why it wasn't coming out is because you've got the little bit that the screws go into here, and you have to sort of stretch the plastic out to make sure that it can pop out nicely, and then it just the camera zero zero will just come free. And then, as we said, the only thing holding it in is this small white cable so I'm going to try and get that out and um, then the camera should be totally free so again doing this sort of thing one handed is quite difficult there you go so the zero zero is out we can see the orientation that the connector, the RST connector, I think, or the JST connector is in the top left. Um, so that's going to be important for the orientation um, of the, just make sure the cable's in the right place when we put the, uh, the Fox Ear camera in. And so what I'm going to need to do now is going to need to remove this bracket because we're not going to be able to use any other bracket with this particular frame. So let's just put the zero zero to one side. I'm going to move the electronics tray out, and we're going to see the Foxeer camera. So this was around about thirty-five pounds uh, UK pounds. Um, I got it on eBay, uh, delivered really quickly. Really happy with the quality of the camera. I've seen lots of uh, videos online, and the the footage that I've seen seems pretty good. So as you can see, this is the HS1177, it's a Sony camera, it's uh, obviously fo the Foxeer version, it's PAL and it's 600 TVL, it uses a DC power and it you can power this from between 5 and 22 volts, so it's a pretty, pretty big range there, so you should be able to power that off of pretty much you know, your standard 4S LiPo, you may not even need to have any sort of deep regulation in there because I believe it's it's a pretty good camera without it and this one comes with a 2.8 millimeter lens so let's see what's inside I can get the box open So any of you that have bought these board cameras before, the box is pretty much standard. It's, um, I think they all come from the same factory. So, looking at this, it's great because the orientation is the same. Let's just put them side by side. So, yep, yeah, the orientation is the same for the connector so it's not going to be too difficult there and unfortunately we can't I can't show you the pinout markings because it's hidden by the bracket but we'll get the bracket off and then we'll compare the pinouts um, for these in a second Let's put them back what else have we got on the box got a cable which is good because it's nice and already contaminated both ends but we're not going to need that we have a bracket which we're not going to need either but we'll keep that because it might come in useful for another build the instructions and the OSD cable as we can see here so it's interesting how this one how this one works so it's a bit different from all the other ones that I've used um, it's got this like funky rubber type mouse so you'll see, it's very similar to what you see on Le Lenovo laptops you push it in the direction that you want to use it like a joystick um, it's got the power and a video out by the looks of it but we're not going to need that either so let's put that back in the box that was all that was in there let's put that to one 
side. So the zero zero then. So what we need to do is we need to get um, just a standard screwdriver and get this bracket off. So I'm just going to go and grab the screwdriver and we'll get the bracket out and then we can compare the pin out. Okay, as you can see now I've got the bracket off. Um, it's actually four screws, not two. You've got an extra two on the back which I hadn't noticed here and here. And you just need to be careful as well because once you take those screws off this back is actually really loose um, and the board will just fall straight out. So it's worth putting those screws back in once you've finished. So I'm just going to show you now if I can get it on this to zoom. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. So the top pin is video. Then we've got ground, power, and audio. Let's look at this one. So the top pin is ground. Oh, come on. There we go. The top pin is OSD, the second pin is video, the third pin is ground, and the fourth pin is power. So you can see here there's a pin out difference. So if we were just to plug this in as it is now, we'd probably have some issues with um, well, you can see there that the polarity is wrong, we've got the ground where the power is. On, on the TBS00 and the bottom is audio and where the power is so it's not going to work and, and you know at the very least it's just not going to work and at the worst case scenario we're going to damage our nice new camera so what we're going to do is we're going to work out what pins need to move to what position and then once we've done that we can look at how we're going to actually move those pins around so give me a couple of minutes I'm just going to write down exactly what pins are going to be moved and in, in what orientation and then we can get to it okay so I'm back now and I've managed to completely write out the pinouts which on the as you can see on the right hand side we have the existing pinout for the zero zero camera at the top we have video second we have ground then power then audio and then the order is yellow black red and white from top to bottom and on the left hand side we've got the existing pinout which is what we need to we need to change the cable that's already in the Vendetta 2 and that needs to be OSD which is audio video ground and power from top to bottom in that order and that's white yellow black and red so the only way we're going to do that is by taking this little cable here and getting something sharp and a Stanley blade or a sharp knife and just lifting those tiny little so I can get it into focus come on I'm not going to be able to do it but I'm, unfortunately I can't get it into focus but you'll see on the on the bottom of this cable there's these tiny little white lugs and you just need to get something underneath them pull them up and then slightly pull on the cable to release it and then so and because we because as you can see here we need to, we need to move every single cable so it's not like we can just leave one in and just move the ones that we need so we're going to actually have to remove all the pinouts and all the pins of these cables um, and then put them back in in order so we're going to have to do it really carefully so this is definitely going to be a two-handed job um, so I'm going to position the camera so you can watch but um, we might you might not be able to actually see exactly what I'm doing so. Yeah, you just need to going to be able to get something sharp underneath these tiny little white things, pull them up and slightly put on the cable, and then we're going to put them back in in the order that it says here. And that's and then hopefully we should be able to put everything back together and test it. So what I'm going to do is put the camera up, and we're going to try and do that now. Cool, so I'm going to try now to remove every single one of these pins uh, using something sharp. I'm just going to try and get underneath it here. And that's the white one. I 
and there we go. So as you can see, it's quite fiddly, and um, that's the white one out. So I'm just going to repeat that now on the others. And we, we've, we've done it. So they're all out. So all, all we've got to do now is push these back in in the order that they that they go in, and. Put, put the Vendetta back together and give it a test. So I'm now going to put the cables back in and we'll see if it works. So if I'd give you a quick close up of the actual connectors before I push them back in, so you'll see that they are shaped in a way which they only should go in in one way and the little lugs hold them in place using these little things here. So. You shouldn't have any difficulty putting these in because they, they should only go in in one way. Um, I don't know if you can see see the you know it's too small, but yeah, there's a they only go in one way, so you shouldn't have any problems. Um, you just need to make sure that you're ma that you're matching up how this is going to connect in to the camera, which direction it, it fits into the camera, it, which fit, which direction it fits into the plug to make sure that you know which hole is top and which hole is bottom and then it's just a case of following my little guide here making sure that white's at the top, yellow's at the second black is the third and red is at the very bottom which will match up with the pin out on the camera here so I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to test it so just a quick little tip to make sure you're getting the plug around the right, the right way if you actually put the plug into the the, the actual connector into the plug as you can see how I've done here it only goes it only goes in one way so if you try and put it in the other way it won't go into the plug so now we know that we can that we're putting the white one in the top and it's just a case of pushing it in um, into the top one um, I don't I don't suggest you try pushing the cable in because it's it'll be too tough to get into the the pin on the other side so make sure you take the actual white plug out and only just put it in there just to make sure you've got the correct orientation. So you can probably see now that I've got the cables into the correct order. We've got white at the top, yellow, black and red. That is the order that the new camera requires and is has been changed from what the zero zero was. So I'm now just going to go and fit these little brackets that we took off the zero zero earlier. I'm going to fit these into the Fox Ear camera um, and we're going to see what, what, what screws we're going to use. So it's possible that we'll use the screws from the Zero Zero because they're actually longer and they have a little bit of, um, they stick out a little bit to allow for the extra bit of plastic as you can see here. Um, they, they allow for this little extra bit of plastic on the brackets um, there that's where the hole is there so I'm going to get the brackets fitted on um, and I'll work out which which screws to use and then we'll start to get it fitted back into the Vendetta very quickly one last thing um, when I was trying to put the screws in to fix the mount to the new HS1177 there was a bit of an issue with the screws and particularly the screws that go into the, the bracket, the side ones. Um, the ones that came with the zero zero, these ones here, um, unfortunately they just wouldn't go in. And 
I decided I'll try the ones that came with the the HS1177 and they don't fit either so I've looked online and it seems to be I'm not the only person with these issues so what I've done is I've left those screws out now I have seen other people trying to force these screws in and what they've done is ended up stripping the heads I did have that problem earlier myself um, but luckily before it got stuck in there I was able to get it back out and that was when I decided that it wasn't worth trying to force these screws in I couldn't find any other screws anywhere in the house that I could use instead so my recommendation is to leave those screws out um, they, the camera is pretty secure in there anyway it doesn't seem to move around, it doesn't seem to be rocking so we're all good there so yeah, just leave those screws out unless you've got other screws handy that will fit. And there we have it. So the Foxy is now fitted back into the electronics tray. Just taking it out, uh, putting it, putting it in the same way as it came out, and using the T6 hex to put these tiny little screws back in the side. And as you can see, I've just tried to keep them as central as I possibly can, just as the zero zero was so we re retain the camera angle um, so all looking good um, I think what I'll do now is uh, I'll yeah I'm not going to power it up like this I'm going to put it back together because there should be no reason why it's not working and if it is it'll be uh, my own fault and I'll have to take it apart again so yeah I'm going to put it back together and then we'll do a quick test in the goggles and we'll see if everything looks good Okay, so the Vendetta is all put back together. We have a LiPo plugged in. It's all powered up and bound to the Tyrannus, so we've got no nasty beeping sound. Um, I've got the head plays here, and they're all powered up and on the correct channel. And if you just have a look, I'm not sure if you can see. I'll see if I can get the camera right in there. It all looks to be working quite well. We've got colour. Um, I've tested it shining up into the light and we don't get that horrible washout effect. Um, as you can see the OSD is displaying down in the bottom correctly. But what I've noticed is, is that it's actually chopping a lot of the text off at the top here. So we've got the, the battery voltage. You can only read half of it. The milliamps per hour. And the amp, just pull it and over there all the information at the top is being cut off so I assume that is something to do with the oh, the camera configuration and maybe we need to change it to, to a wide angle um, so what I'm going to have to do is do a little bit of research on that to find out what's causing that but I'm sure it's just a camera setting and um, I will post in the comments or in the description um, an update to how I fixed that but I can't imagine it being too difficult. So it looks like the camera swap has been successful. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's useful to anyone else that's looking to swap out the 00 with the HS1177. Um, please like and subscribe um, if you want to hear more videos. Hope you enjoyed this one and check out my channel. Thanks very much.